Welcome to r slash am I the butthole where OP's extended family tries to steal her engagement ring. Am I the butthole for not giving my engagement ring to my dead fiance's family? My dead fiance's name is John. After I dated John for four years, we got engaged. When he proposed, the ring he used was two sizes too big. We went to the store that he bought it from two weeks before proposing and he kept the receipt. We got the ring in the right size and kept the same style. We did plan to have a wedding after three years of planning and saving. Ten months after the proposal, John passed away in a car accident. I used our wedding savings to pay for his funeral. The day after the funeral, John's brother came to me asking for the ring. I asked why, and his response was the ring had been passed down in their family for five generations. I told him that was BS because I have proof the ring was bought for me less than a year ago. We argued for a bit and then he stormed out. Then I got calls from John's family saying that I'm a liar and demanding the ring. Then I got a letter from their lawyer and in the letter they also demanded that I reimburse them the cost for John's funeral. So I got myself a lawyer, showed the proof about the ring and that I paid for the funeral and I won in court. I thought the madness was over until John's sister recently messaged me. She and her boyfriend are engaged, but they haven't gotten a ring and she wants John's ring. After I said no, she went crazy and messaged me non-stop demanding the ring. I've blocked her over and over, but she finds ways around it. I was having brunch with my friend, my phone was on the table, and a message from the sister popped up and my friend saw it. My friend knows about everything. I explained about my sister-in-law's messages, and my friend thinks that I'm the butthole and that I should give my sister-in-law the ring. She told my other friends, and they're all saying the same thing, so now I'm doubting myself. Man, it's so weird to me that so many toxic and incorrect people can all be involved in OP's life. I can kinda understand the family of OP's fiancé being all toxic and evil because they don't care about OP, they just want free money. But why are OP's friends taking their side too? OP, I don't know what's going on in this story. This feels pretty cut and dry. Your fiancé got you a ring, he paid for it, now it's yours because he gifted it to you, so it's your ring. I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes, I'm giving everyone else in this story 1.5 out of 5 buttholes. Am I the butthole for warning my friend about my ex, who she's now engaged to, and telling her to stop complaining about things that I warned her about? I'm a 25 year old woman, and I met Dave, who's 26, in college. We dated, and everything was great. We got engaged and moved in together. Within 10 months, I realized that he had serious issues with self-pleasure, laziness, and some other stuff. My friend Sue, who's 25, has been my friend for years and she was supposed to be my maid of honor. She was upset about me breaking up with him and one day she called me and said Dave asked her out. This happened a few months after our breakup. I'm not a gatekeeper, so I said, Sue, he's not a good guy. You're like a sister to me and I wouldn't want my sister involved in the same situation that I just got out of. I then told her some of the dirty details. I said, hey, I'm not perfect either, but the relationship was far from balance and it was so toxic. I know my friend is a grown woman and I told her to do what she wants, but seriously, she said that she understood. Next week, Sue and Dave started dating. I just removed myself from the situation. I blocked my ex and I saw that he sent me a message on socials, but I blocked and deleted all of it. It's now a year and a half later. Now, as a side note, I once caught my ex trying to mess with my birth control, which made my sex drive and my trust just fall, and it was a big domino to our breakup. Dave wants kids, but he can't bring himself to shower more than once in three days. Sue called me crying. They're now engaged with the ring that I gave back to him, and she's pregnant. She's, <laughs> she's at the end of her line. He doesn't help with the house, and he pays late on bills. Whoa! Dave told her, his pregnant fiance, to go donate blood if she was worried about money. I let her cry to me on the phone for like an hour. She cried about how he's lazy, he refuses to work, he has a negative attitude, and how he's sexting bots online but that it's not cheating since it's AI. She complained about how lazy and awful he is. She even retold stories that I told her of what he did to me. I felt numb listening to it and I just thank god that it wasn't me. This was exactly what I was afraid of. This is why I left him. 
At the end, I just said, Sue, I told you this would happen when we started dating. I didn't say it as a sneery jab, just an emotional, honest comment. She hung up and she hasn't tried to contact me since. Am I the butthole? I love this top comment from Affectionate Style. Not the butthole. First off, as your friend, it was weird of her to go date him after you. And secondly, you broke up with him for a reason and you warned her. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, and now the horse is pregnant. Guys, I was, <laughs> I was shook when I read that part about him telling his pregnant fiancé to go donate blood. I'm not a doctor or anything, I don't know a whole lot about pregnancy, but do you think blood is important to pregnant ladies? <laughs> Will hospitals even take blood from pregnant ladies? Let's look this up, actually. Yeah, according to the Red Cross, you're not even eligible to donate blood if you're pregnant. Is that because it's dangerous to you or because your blood has crazy pregnancy hormones? It's probably that, right? Oh, no, I'm wrong, actually. It's more because it's dangerous to the woman because donating blood during pregnancy may increase the risk of complications such as anemia and compromised fetal health. Well, I guess realistically, it's just a bad idea all around, right? So there you go. Mystery solved. Tur <laughs> Turns out pregnant ladies need their blood. Who, who could have guessed? Who could have ever figured that one out? Am I the butthole for yelling at my husband over bread? Whenever I buy something out of the ordinary with a specific dinner purpose in mind, my husband manages to find it and eat it. <laughs> I'm sure that if I was planning to bake something and bought yeast, I would come home to find him completely distended and surrounded in empty yeast packets. I usually stick to the same grocery list every week, and I feel like if I'm buying something out of the ordinary that is clearly an ingredient for a larger meal, he could at least ask before devouring it. Last night, I bought two baguettes, which I've only ever purchased to make French bread pizza for him and our kids. I bought these at 11pm, and they weren't even here for 12 hours when I saw them on the counter with the first 6 inches ripped off of each loaf. I scanned the house, and I saw my husband chewing. If it had been one loaf, okay. If he had used a knife, maybe. But the fact that he didn't ask if they were going to be for dinner and then ripped the top off of both of them like that final boss bloater in The Last of Us that lumbers out of the hole and rips the guy's head off, this is unforgivable. He insists that if I buy something for a specific purpose, I should tell him. I said that I'm already taking on the burden of grocery shopping and cooking and the least he can do is ask. Am I the butthole here? OP, okay, this is weird. The fact that he ripped off the ends of two baguettes instead of just eating one whole baguette makes it seem like this is not about him just being hungry. This is about him being a jerk to you just to prove that he can do whatever he wants because I guess I'm a man and, and no one tells me what to do and if I want to eat baguette, I will eat the baguette. So to me, this feels like intentional disrespect. OP, you get zero out of five buttholes. He gets one out of five buttholes. Am I the butthole for making a white woman cry? I'm a biracial 30-year-old woman. My mom is Afro-Jamaican, and my dad is Irish slash Ashkenazi Jewish, so my hair is extremely curly, and I have a lot of it. I usually wear it braided to manage the heat and humidity, but tomorrow is wash day, so it's currently loose. I had to pop over to the grocery store for a dinner party, but the closest store was out of what I needed, so I had to go to the predominantly white suburbs. On my way out, I felt something tugging on my head, so I whip around. There's an older white woman, maybe mid to late 60s, withdrawing her hand, and she says, I just wanted to see how soft it is. Today was just not a particularly good day, so I yelled at her, Is there an effing petting zoo sign pinned to my back? She immediately started stuttering, trying to explain herself, insisting that she didn't mean any harm. I responded by asking, If you wouldn't pet a dog without asking first, what makes you think it's normal to stick your filthy hands in a stranger's hair? She started crying, and other people started coming over to see what the problem was, so I just left. I told this story to my husband, who's white, and my parents. My mom is on my side, but my dad and husband are saying that I could have been more understanding to this woman, so now I'm asking Reddit. This story is so easy, I don't even know why you felt obligated to come to Reddit. It doesn't even deserve commentary. OP, you get 0 out of 5 buttholes. The old white lady gets 1.5 out of 5 buttholes. Keep your hands to yourself, man. Am I the butthole for audibly saying, bruh, when my sister announces she was pregnant again? I'm a 16-year-old girl, and I'm a younger sister to Lori, who's 26. 
Me and Lori have never been close since we had different dads. I was an affair baby. Lori has always resented me for ruining her family, but whatever. Lori has six kids. Yes, six. Twin boys, Beck and Joe, who are seven years old. That was a planned pregnancy. A girl, Liliana, who's six. That was unplanned. Another girl, Angel, who's five. That was planned. Another boy, Keith, who's two. That was planned. And another... <laughs> <laughs> and another baby boy, Carl, who's nine months, not planned. Despite the fact that Lori is incapable of taking care of these kids, four of them were actually planned. Because she just knows that my pushover mom will give her money and watch the kids for her. My mom even quit her job to do so, even turning her workroom into a nursery for Carl. We're pretty well off, but we can't do this forever. I try not to judge, and I just ignore Lori like she does me. Even though when my mom is busy doing something, like changing a diaper, I have to step in and help. Especially with the twins, since they're very rough with each other. Tonight, at dinner, Lori's boyfriend joined us. He's the father of just Carl, as well as Lori's father. This wasn't abnormal, so I didn't think anything of it. Until my sister's... <laughs> Until my sister said that she has some exciting news. I wish she'd said something else, but I knew what she was going to say. I'm pregnant, she said. Everyone went dead silent until I said, bruh. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it out loud, but come on. Lori gave me a death stare and said if I wanted to say something, I should just say it. So I did. I said, Lori, this is your, I had to take a moment to count, sixth child. You know that we can't keep supporting you. Without mom, you'd be on the streets and you know that. Look at mom, she's so tired. She's always taking care of your kids, and so am I. I bet that I've changed more diapers than you have, you selfish B-word. Lori began to cry and ran out to her boyfriend's car. He followed her and drove her home. My mother then began to cry. She left to get Carl back to sleep since the yelling woke him up. At that point, it was just me and Lori's father. He began to yell at me and told me that I was a brat and Lori was a great mother. Then he stormed off. As I'm sitting here in the morning, watching the boys, I'm thinking, was I too obnoxious? My mom says that a lot. I don't mean to because of my autism, but come on. Am I the butthole? OP, considering the parentification abuse and how it seems like the entire family prefers your sister over you, this is a completely justifiable bruh moment. OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 bras. I'm giving your sister 2.5 out of 5 bras. I'm also giving Lori's father 2 out of 5 bras because yelling at you for speaking your mind is pretty unreasonable. Am I the butthole for not showing up to my sister's wedding and calling her ungrateful? I'm a 29-year-old male, and my sister Ashley, who's 27, had her wedding yesterday, but I didn't attend. Two years or so ago, when she was going through medical depression and required treatment, I helped her. She didn't have the money, and I was the one who paid for everything for her. None of her friends helped, and neither did any of our other relatives. Much later, when she had gotten out of her issues, I once urgently required some money. I asked her, and she refused by saying that she can't help and to not bother her about it again. I was shocked considering how much I'd spent for her, and when she continued to refuse, I asked her whether she had forgotten what I'd done for her. Ashley asked me, how can I say that I cured her when it, <laughs> when it was the medicines that cured me, and that I wasn't the doctor? She said that it was the medicine and the doctor that treated her, not me. I didn't argue. She got mad and asked me what the problem was and that she wants everyone present at the wedding. She asked me to not insult her. I told her that she herself had insulted me by brushing away everything I did for her and that she's extremely ungrateful for not helping me with money when she should have. I told her that I hadn't even asked her back for the money that I'd spent on her, but she has no humanity at all. We had an argument and everyone asked me to forget about it and she said to attend. But I didn't attend her wedding and I didn't even congratulate her. Am I the butthole? Okay, in an edit, OP clarifies that he asked her for $600 and he spent, whoa, fifteen dollars to $20,000 on her treatment. He also says he knows that she had the money because she recently got a job that was high-end and she would have had enough money to pay him. 
also, the wedding was being paid for by his parents and the groom's parents. This woman's logic is so crazy and detached from reality that I don't, okay, I don't actually honestly think that she believes that. I don't think she really thinks, oh, it wasn't you who cured me, it was the doctor and the medicine. I think she understands that without your money, she couldn't have done it. I, I think, more than likely, she's just using that stupid excuse because she doesn't want to give you money. Now, I'm not saying it's excusable or that makes it any better in any way. I'm just saying, there, there's no way, man. How could anyone think like that? Still, this is just unbelievably toxic, entitled, selfish, hypocritical. OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes. You sound like a really kind, caring brother. I'm giving her 3 out of 5 buttholes. The way that she disrespected your help and then hypocritically refused you money after you gave her $20,000 is crazy to me. That was r slash am I the butthole. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.